as individuals, we are strong, but as a community, we are powerful. Tell me what you need, and I'll do what I can. Who are we? MSI! Who are we? MSI! Who are we? Hola, hola, familia. Welcome to Get Going with MSI. This is your host with the most, Alan Ruelas. I am super happy to be here because we have a superstar by the name of... Brian Becerra. Yeah, so funny enough, uh, Brian Becerra, our brother, um, has been in high demand. You know, we've been promoting him for months and months. Um, but the only reason I said that is because we are eager to get to know you a little bit more. As you all know, um, the MSI podcast itself is for the purpose of our brothers and sisters to get to know who they are, to build the legacy for those who are coming up. And they want to get to know you, right, Brian? So the first question that I always like to establish is how are you doing? Well, appreciate you for having me on today. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. The, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, it's something where I've seen these videos, um, how you interview the people, and now to be part of it, it's something that's interesting. Um, but today's been good so far in the sense that I, I woke up uh, healthy, I woke up blessed, I woke up with, um, you know, realizing that all my... All my people are good, all my people are safe. We don't have any issues right now. Um, health is, like I said, 100. So I feel that today has started rough, right? Nice, usually I say that because um, mental health is very important. As you know, um, sometimes when you ask someone, they tell you how you're doing and then it's like, you don't want the, I'm just doing good, right? So thank yeah. you for elaborating. Um, I'm compelled to share as well. I'm doing good as well. I'm happy to share space with you. And of course, we have a live audience um, with um, some of the brothers. And I say that because um, we obviously want to get to know more about you. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started with something very important. Um, in one word, um, can you describe your experience here at MSI? With one word, I would say appreciation. When I say appreciation, I say that because um, I'm very appreciative of all the people that I've got to meet here at the uh, in the Brotherhood, people that I've been able to talk to, encounter with, um, see them to grow throughout their journey, as well as being able to help them throughout their journey, seeing this program grow, and at the same time, how this program has made uh, me grow as a person and the changes that it's done for me um, academically, but also in you know, my personal life. And uh, I really appreciate the program. I definitely do agree that great appreciation is something that I also share with you. I think that it resonates with me as an individual because, you know, it's a space where you're able to talk about identity and you're also able to have a community, right? So I think that I also agree with that. You know, another question that I have for you is um, you're also an MSI student leader. Uh, talk to us about that. What do you want the brothers and sisters to know about this specific role that you have? Okay, well, being part of a student leader when... Being an MSI, it's something that you're able to help make sure that the program flows uh, steady, making sure that you know all the programming, uh, making sure that the events go so that you're behind the scenes, you're looking at, okay, what needs to be changed, what needs to be done, what is it that'll get the activities, that'll get the programming done. So, um, you know, it's a different perspective before, like when I would just go show up to an event, um, compared to, okay, now you're part of the event, uh, you're putting time into it, so it takes more value, you know, uh, more value. Uh, not only that, but also you feel more connected to the program. You're part of it, as you saw a girl, like, okay, it came from a thought, and now it's actually uh, being produced. You're seeing that it's, you know, helping others, and it's, uh, it's, it's a great feeling. Yeah, I think that for all the brothers and sisters watching, I'm also a student leader. Uh, we assist with programming, right, what that looks like, uh, specifically more so for events and what we are able to tailor for our students. I know for a fact you've been here and you have seen your already. And um, what's something funny that you have experienced here, at least with the staff that you want to share? Yeah, something funny. <laughs> I would say nothing's funny. <laughs> no, it's just something that you know. When you come to to the office, sometimes it's not your traditional office where you walk in. You're assigned an activity, and you just stay um, and look focus on your activity. Just only looking at that. Okay, five hits, you clock out. You leave. No, you're interacting with uh, other leaders, and um, you know throughout the process, sometimes like little jokes throughout the day that'll carry you, and it's it makes the the work environment more pleasurable, more more uh more safe for you more comfortable yeah i definitely i definitely do agree with that as well i think sharing space with you has been really cool you have um at least i would say a very 
honorable aura. What I mean about that is that whenever I feel like I'm talking to you, I feel like you really listen and you really take the time to understand the person from their lens and what specific experience they're going through. So meaning, I often think about all the times you come in and you're always running to go to work. Right. And yeah. I share that sentiment, too. We're always working. Right. Yeah. We always need to get the bang for our buck, um, you know, putting food on the table, making sure that we're, you know, crossing our T's, dotting our I's because, you know, we have to keep working. Right. As first generation, we'll talk about that later. Right. Um, but what do you, Brian Becerra, you know, outside of work, outside of being studious, what do you do for fun? Um, Things that I'd say that I do for fun would be mainly like when I'm able to uh, hang out with my friends, hang out with my uh, my girlfriend, my dog specifically, like being able to do things outside of the work environment, outside of school, you know, also things like, for example, going out to go camping is something that I really like to do uh, when you're able to uh, connect with the environments, being in a, not in a city environment, you know, something where you could exclude yourself from other people, from other you know, activities that are happening around you and you could just focus on you and the nature. What's your dog's name again? Bruno. Bruno, I know that you have your like on live cam and you're always checking them. Yeah, that's another thing too. I'll be sometimes at work or <laughs> going to work or like throughout the day just checking the camera, see what he's doing, making sure he's good and most of the time he's just sleeping. Like a lazy. No, I know. <laughs> Bruno, I've got to meet Bruno and Bruno is not like Bruno Mars. Um, but no, he goes in and he's um he's very healthy, very strong. And my dogs, they're just very clumsy, um, kind of like the, their owner. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> um, so cool, I yeah. think outside of that, you know, it's interesting to know that you obviously have all these outlets of, you know, endeavors. Um, what is something that the MSI brothers or sisters might not know about you? What is something that they might not know about? Me? Okay, well, um, I would say that there's a lot of things that I would like to do down in life. And when I say that, it's just right now I'm working my off to make Do sure what? that my oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really <laughs> um, no yeah so you know, I'm working a lot trying to make sure that I set it, uh, things up right for my family but uh, in the process something that I think that people don't know is just that um, in the process of making sure that I stay on top of my things and working, I would like to eventually open up businesses to be able to come back and give back to my community and help programs uh, similar to MSI, something where uh, I strive to one day be um, owning properties. And I mean, right now I don't have one, but I feel like down the line, I would, if I'm able to get into that business and I'll be able to, um, you know, make it grow and whatever I'm able to grow, also spread that love and bless others with it. Yeah, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken also, first and foremost, that's fabulous to hear, right? More kudos to you. Um, being first gen, is that something that you take into consideration when making these decisions? Yes, a lot of times I'm very doubtful in the way that I go about things because uh, I feel like I don't want to mess it up. Um, I am a first gen, meaning like, I'm also the you know first one in my family to go to college, but I'm also the oldest. So I have two uh, little sisters that are looking up to me, seeing what am I doing? What is uh, what is Brian doing right now? What has he done and all that? So I feel like um, I'm being a role model to them, but also as a first gen, I'm um, going back to being doubtful, making sure that I don't take the inappropriate steps uh, towards getting to um, certain pathways throughout my career. And also, you know, in life, I don't want to make a certain step that could affect me, could affect my family, could affect those around me because I feel like I'm their first line of defense. Mm -hmm. And whatever happens um, it, through my actions would go down and trickle down to them. Okay. I mean, just hearing that for me, it sounds like a lot of pressure. Um, but I'm sure that a lot of us can relate to that. Even when we're having our MSI brother or brother gathering, right? We talked about the pressures of pursuing higher education. So now, this is like a double whammy. So, I mean, what pressures do you have entering a space such as higher education, right? I want to get to know why you chose Cal State Fullerton, right? But also, what does it mean for you being in a facility, like, for instance, in higher education? Well, yeah, well, being in higher education, one, it was it was a choice that I made that I felt like I was walking into just with a blindfold. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how it was. Um, so also being the first one in higher education, coming to Fullerton, some, a place that is 
close not too far uh, from home. From where? From home. From what, is, what's home? Oh, okay, that's a Compton County. <laughs> He's from Compton! <laughs> yeah, so something that's not too far from home, but coming into higher education, it has put um, some sort of level of stress to my life and the way I go about things because it's a way that I need to make sure that I get on my classes straight, make sure I'm on the uh, career uh, trajectory to make sure I get to where I'm supposed to be. But in that process, it's one of those where you feel like you don't have any room for any downfalls or you don't have any room for failure and all that pressure does build up over time because you have work, you have your classes, you have your personal life and all that is accumulating. And at above all, you know, you're going to university, you're being the first person um, in your family mm -hmm. that they could say, oh, look, yeah, my son is going to uh, university. Oh, my brother's going to university and making sure that you don't mess up along the way. It is some form of pressure that it is uh, Kind of like just a pendulum over your head. You're looking at it all the time, and it's just the weight over your shoulders that it's difficult for you to take off and until you get to where you need to be. Nice. I often think about this because even when I'm at home, I would have those long conversations with my parents of what that looks like, right? And I'm very proud because I've said this before, just being in a space like this, um, taking time to be able to get to know you, but also knowing that, if I'm not mistaken, you're graduating um, two semesters from now? Yes. Yes. So, you know, obviously I tip my hat in advance because I graduate next semester. Okay. Um, but I said that because it... it in retrospect, when we're having these conversations, it's like, what does it mean to be a man of color? What does it mean to be breaking barriers in higher education, right? What does it mean to be vulnerable and also acknowledging these high pressures that society builds, but more so even within our own family? And I said because, you know, you are this, um, taking the steps to build your future, right? Um, what is something that you are planning for yourself? Um, I guess you could say... From here to five years, 10 years, what what does Brian Becerra look like? Is he going to be, you know, a doctor? Is he going to be a physicist? Is he going to be, you know, a dad? Is he going to be <laughs> a mechanic? What's what's what, what what's something you could share with us? Okay, five years. Uh, in five years, I see myself uh, being already in my career, being a physician assistant, as I feel by that point, I'd be already graduated from PA school. Um, and at the same time, at that point, Point, I would feel like I would be beginning my family um, of my own, probably my first kid. That's my goal. I've already been married at that time. And then, you know, I feel like in five years, that's going to be very early into my career in which from there I could then build on and be able to then advance to go back to universities, go back to my community, let them know how it is I got there and help more to be where I would be at. Yeah, and then just for clarification purposes, I, I mean, we touched up a little bit on it, but can you talk to me about your major, if you have a minor, right? Um, you obviously talked about commuting and coming back and forth. Um, and then when you do so, I have a follow-up question for that. Okay. Yeah, so my major is uh, public health. So what I did is initially, it, during my time in high school, I did... Um, courses at my community college. So when I first came to Cal State Fullerton, I already came out rural with transferring 60 units, um, helping me cover my GEs, in which f after that point for my freshman year, I've been focusing on doing other prerequisites for mm -hmm. PA school. Uh, not only that, but also doing what are for my major. I have been debating about doing the uh, minor in Spanish, um, but right now I'm going to see how it might affect if I'm going to stay a little bit longer or if it will fit into my, into my agenda. Okay. And I think that, you know, it's important for us to understand that. I don't know if you were, for instance, in high school, because Brian, if y'all didn't know, is very, very smart. Um, and I think that I often have curiosity about, you know, how was your K through 12 experience and then leading up to a transition such as high, like a university, right? Were you part of like Avid or anything? Or was this just like naturally you're just built like super smart? Okay. No, well, basically what happened was that, you know, I had... Um I went to uh, elementary, middle school, right there in Compton. When I was in my middle school, that's when uh, counselor were beginning to see what opportunities were available. And at the time, that's when they presented to us the high school that I went, that I would eventually go to, which was Compton Early College. At the time, they had only one class, like ever, part of the program. So then we would be the second class if we were like to join. And when they offered in the high school, at first, we I don't really pay much attention or care to it until my mom brought it up to me and she was explaining to me how it would give you uh, college classes to take while you're in high school, making sure that you're on career, um, 
career ready, something that'll get you, you know, your foot in the door so that when you get into a university, um, you already have uh, already a couple steps ahead. And when my mom brought it up to me, then that's when I started to uh, put more attention to it, see what it was about, as mm -hmm. I saw that it's something that would make her proud, would something that she saw value in. And whatever she saw value in, that's where I started to pay more attention to it. Okay, let me see if she's telling me about this. I mean, it could be for a good reason. And most definitely, that's when I went to Compton Area College and did a couple of uh, uh, community college classes there and most definitely helped me. Yeah, no, I think I missed out something very important. And I, it's like, hello, mother, hello, father. I met mom and dad and hello, um, sister and sister. You know what I mean? It's always lovely to have that opportunity to, you know, get to know more of the individual and obviously walk into someone's home, which is an honor. But I say that because, um, you know, it's important to hear that you take into consideration what your family's telling you to make these big decisions, right? It sounds like you're very proud of it too. And I think that's something to applaud. I'm like, Rudy, where's the applause? And I'm like, da, 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 da. Um, but outside of that, Armando, well, thank you so much for sharing. I think one of the other areas that I wanted to ask is everyone knows here that you are very passionate about automobiles, cars. Uh, talk to me about what's your favorite car, why are you into cars, and then most definitely, um, is there some type of maybe career path that you're looking also with um, automotive stuff? Okay, so basically I was a senior in high school when I started, when I bought my own truck. Um, it's something that made me really proud, you know, I did a lot of hours, I did a lot of, uh, a lot of time that I dedicated to try to get my own first mm -hmm. vehicle. and. It's something that it wasn't handed to me. I had to I had to work for my first truck. And the moment that I did get my truck, it's something that I just fell in love with it again. You know, when I was younger, um, I used to go to a lot of car shows. I used to see drag races a lot um, as my pops would take me. And when I got my truck, it just, it just gave me nostalgia back then, how things were. So then I started getting into it. And at the time, that's when I had a, I, um, I met a neighbor that he was also into cars and he was just always working on his. So I figured, oh, let me give it a shot. Let me try to hang out with him a bit. Mm. And then uh, from there, I saw him, how he was doing uh, a lot of the mechanic himself and all that. He had all the tools and really cut, sparked my interest. So then from there, I started doing little things at a time. Okay, let me try to change the battery myself. Let me do an oil change, maybe change the intake until um, leading up to now, like even doing transmission swaps, motor swaps. And it's just something that every time I begin to work on a car, I just, but you forget about everything that's going on around me and just focus on the machines, on how they operate, uh, see what I could do to make sure they run right. Would and you say it's like something therapeutic for you? In a way, yeah. Okay. It's, it's pretty nice, you know, like mm -hmm. you come over with problems here and there, okay, how do I take this part off? How do I swap this out? How do I, how do, I do it? And then you start to get, uh, your mind's like a little puzzle. Okay, where did I put this bowl? Where did I need to put this one? Like, where did it go? Okay. So it's, I'd say it's therapeutic, but also kind of like a big mind game, big puzzle of how things go and how you assemble them together. I'm glad you like that. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like more of like the creative lens, but more so this is about you. And so I'm glad to know because sometimes I do have issues with my car and I'm like, hey, Brian, what's up? I'm like, <laughs> um, maybe you can understand this because I don't understand it, right? Um, but I think that, you know, it's good to hear that you have outlets of like how you take care of yourself, right? So beside, uh, before we jump into like how you take care of yourself, um, I want to get to know more a little bit of that about that um what's your favorite car what's your favorite truck like what's the car that you mm. that's your car i mean i feel like down the line uh, right now one of my favorite cars is actually one of the ones that i'm working on right now which is a 1955 cadillac okay it's a very old car that um again yeah i've already have uh, like about two three years working on it mm -hmm. and it's just uh, I got it by an ex-boss that he let me car let me have the car for free and it was just run down a lot of rust a lot of holes a lot of uh, need to help body work mechanically and all that so I feel that once I'm done with that car I'll be able to That's take it down Whittier cruise it mm, okay okay and, uh, I'm all for that y'all and then once I do have money I feel like a GTR would be nice a GTR okay you you have a vision I'm good with my Honda Civic Right, Ethan Hoffman? <laughs> I got you, I got you. So self-care. So transitioning obviously to another topic. 
Um, how does Brian Becerra take care of himself? Um, specifically, more so you said, like, maybe having, you know, your personal time with automobiles and fixing them. What else do you do? Um, how do you take care of yourself? And when you do answer this, just think about all the brothers and sisters listening. Maybe they could take some notes as to what works for you, might work for you, and maybe they might like it. Maybe they want to do something similar. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, another thing that I do to take care of myself is sometimes just stop to see what's going on around me. You know, everybody's going a thousand miles an hour. They have a lot of things going on in their life, you know, um, outside of work, outside of their academia, out and the personal. There's a lot of things always just constantly changing. And sometimes just taking a stop to, you know, check yourself, making sure that everything's good. Think about what problems you have or what are you, what do you have at hand. Uh, but at the same time, look, changing your perspective and uh, seeing, okay, you know, I have this problem, but at least I have this or I have that. Like, you could be arguing with a family member, but just be, like, grateful that you still have them. And then, uh, you know, it's one of those things that I started to reflect and think about as I go walk my dog at the park, you know, just in the night. It's just, you know, you're able to get some of that cold, fresh air walking through the park. You know, your dog is doing his business, but at the time you're just... Um, you know, just reflecting, just stopping to think, okay, what am I doing right now? What happened today? What happened last week? What am I going to do next week? Mm -hmm. Just start to think about what's going on and then just de-escalate, you know, all the things that are going inside your mind and just try to take things one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, no. Do you also, by any chance, do you um, exercise? Every once in a while I try to, but yeah, it's just something I choose between, oh, do I go to sleep or do I exercise? Uh, if I can, I'll do incorporate them throughout the day, little by little. Okay, yeah, those are two tangible um, outlets alongside the other one you provided. Uh, as a reminder, y'all, we have caps, um, uh, specifically Aaliyah's song. I always say that word funny, but at the end of the day, it's a resource for y'all, um, direct um, psychological uh, resources. But outside of that, do you have any questions for me, Brian? Think about it, think about it, because it's the time, and I'm only going to be like 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... I'd say is uh, what advice do you have for other people um, in when they're facing issues, when they're facing, I mean, different things that are going on throughout their life, what would you recommend or mm -hmm. what do you advise do you have for them to um, not worry or, you know, face those issues in a different mind or in a clouded mind? Well, this is so interesting because I'm like, I love the hot seat, you know. Yeah. Um, my two cents here is that first and foremost, um, find yourself, be yourself, but at least what's been working for me, um, because there are adversities that you really can't, you know, control or better said, that things will come your way. One of the things that I've learned now is that you can create your own family. Um, and what I mean about that is that at times you have different resources around you. Um, you have your blood, your bloodline, of course, and they are stellar, whatever that looks like for you individually. But you also have your friends, your homies, um, in the uh, mentors, right? You have people who are caring for you. You just have to ask or know how to ask for help, right? Yeah. So I think that's something that at least I take with me because I've learned that specifically fall 2023 on something new to me, right? Another avenue that I think that is um, kind of filtering your emotions to be able to be as vulnerable as you can, but at the same time, be as articulate with what you feel. So, again, something I've only got to learn more so now. I talk all day, but that doesn't mean I'm saying a lot, right? Mm -hmm. um, my two cents is that words have impact, but more so how you talk to yourself, but also if you have the availability to then see it, sit down, like you said, and really try to understand what it is that you need, right? Rather than what the expectations are around you. Um, because if you're able to understand yourself and then ask for it, and then... Um, go about your day to day it makes more at least in my opinion and what I've been able to do makes more sense right so to answer your question those are two areas of advice and then at least to put the cherry on top right is to have fun I think that oftentimes we're so caught up with mm -hmm. everything that's like this and this and this and this and this and this I have had um, a lot to balance but at the same time it's something that I've already been prepared for it's something that I'm ready to deliver but at the same time, it's kind of like because we're, I mean, I'll put, I have to say this for me. I'm a workaholic by nature. I also have to also put the same amount of time to have fun. So those are three points. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, okay, I got you. Yeah, I get, especially I get the workaholic part. <laughs> and like, I, I do work a lot of hours throughout the week and I also have uh, my classes and, you know, 
It's a lot. It's it's a lot. It, yeah. it adds up. At yeah. the end of the week, you feel, like, oh, let me catch this day to you stress, but you don't have a day, you have a moment. You have a gap of time. Yeah, you have like a, <laughs> you have a fresh breath of cold air. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I need, uh, with that said, Brand- uh, Brandon is the... <laughs> with that <laughs> said, we don't want to do you dirty like that. <laughs> with that said, Brian, um, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. I really do mean it. You're going to do amazing things. Um, not only do I see a lot in you, but also the mentors and all the brothers and sisters here. Um, they obviously listen and they take care of you. So whatever you need from MSI, this is your casa. And I think that that just goes to show how much appreciation we have for our MSI students our, our MSI student leaders and then our MSI team, right? So um, with that said, thank you so much. And um, do you have anything to tell us or anything you want to share? Last points? I'd say uh, I appreciate you. Um, I mean, this this interview has also made me think about a couple of things that I don't know, I haven't stopped to think about for a while. I was like, hold on, wait, what? <laughs> no, I'd say uh, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Oh, I thank you. It. Nah, shout out to mom and dad. <laughs> but um, outside of that, yeah, uh, we'll see y'all for the next episode. Stay safe and enjoy fall break, y'all. Adios.